Work with me this morning. I want to go to um, the book of Acts. The book of Acts, the 16th chapter, is where we want to go this morning. I was telling one of my, my minister friends uh, as we get into the word this morning. Um, he's in um, um, Bishop Bishop Quissy. He's in uh, Merlin, but he's from Ghana, and he was talking about our church. I said our church is such a melting pot of, um, of faiths that have come together to the faith and the different dynamics of our backgrounds from, from Methodist, Baptist, Church of God in Christ, AME, Pentecostal, on and on and on, then non-denomination, neo-Pentecostal, then no church, club church, just, it's, it's amazing, you know. And the, 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 the astuteness is that when I come in church, I sit looking forward and I give attention. But in, in Africa, when they have Jericho hour, they take all the chairs out and everybody come in and they stand. I told you this before. In the Jericho hour, three, five hours later, they're still going. And say, like, I know I'm a Westerner for sure. You know. But it's, it's strange how that you, I, from here, I can see you better than you can see me, even though all of you are looking at me. But I'm looking at some of you, and you, you're sitting there because you came with your friend. You're like, I don't want them to know, but this thing is getting me. It's getting me. I'm about to holler. And you won't move. It's like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't know how you suppress that that much, you know. And I'm not trying to, to motivate you, you know, but what would you do? Or what would you say if someone walked in that saved your life? You couldn't sit there that calm. Some emotions will come, I don't know. Yes. Acts uh, 16 chapter and verse 16 and 17 and 18. Paul is, is, is writing here, he's in the narrative of the story. Luke is the writer. And watch what happens here. Now it happened as they went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination Met us who brought her masters much profit or gain by fortune telling. The girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul greatly annoyed, I mean from the New King James, turned and said to the spirit, command you in the name of Jesus come out of her I could somebody say you coming out of this 2.0 come out of her in the name of Jesus now whenever you begin to minister messages like this you automatically know that the devil is going to be disturbed so I've been fasting this week and I came prepared and I know that greater is he that's in me and he that's in the world. So if the devil gonna get upset, go on and get upset. Cause I got some more spirit filled believers in here. And is more with us than against us. Um, I'm coming out of this 2.0. Paul is on his way to prayer or to the time of worship. We come in to the, church, to the church, the house of God, on your way to church, guess who is doing drive-bys? Spirit of divination. Oh, he's up early. That devil been working your nerves since Friday. And he couldn't get you on the job, so guess what he thought he'd do? Come by the church. The book of Revelation says that, and we know where Satan's seat is at. He ain't in the club. I'm trying to get me some new fresh meat. I want some church people. I got the people down, down there and out in the streets. I'm trying to get you back out the church. It followed them, this daughter, the daughter. I began to meditate on the thought of the daughter. This is somebody's child. Any parent, any father, usually daughters are, are daddy's hearts and any mother knows it. I don't want anything bad to happen to my daughter. 
even if you have a small mini you and she's running everything. You don't want anything to happen to her. So the mother is very disturbed. I'm not, no, the text is not saying that. I'm embellishing the text by it saying that it was a daughter. And I can imagine the, the feeling of the father as well, seeing his baby girl under the control of a spirit of divination. Hmm. The scripture does not give us insight to how this little girl got involved with this spirit of divination. But it's clear to state that she had it. Please be assured the enemy is always trying to get in. Just want an edge to get in. Lingering around trying to figure out your appetite so I can just find a way to get in. Point back at me like you just, just upset. Say, Pastor, that devil always trying to get in. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I look back at yourself and say, well, keep the door closed. Don't give him any access. The enemy is a spirit, and he needs a body to infiltrate. So sometimes the spirit finds people that are dry. The Bible says it goes to and fro looking for people that are, in, that are dry in dry places, and he goes into that person. The believer, thank God, your spirit filled. Therefore, you cannot be possessed by the devil anymore because you have the spirit of God inside of you. Now, he could oppress you, but he can't possess you. That's why it's good to have the Holy Ghost. With your Rockwilder, with your Glock, with everything else you got, make sure you got the Holy Ghost. Y'all cute for, I don't need that spirit thing. That's all right. <laughs> but there's coming a day in your life where you can't get to your stuff fast enough, but you can call on the name Jesus, and the enemy will begin to back up. Divination, divination, divination is a spirit of the python. Many of us know what a python is, a snake. The python is not a venomous snake, but it has power to suffocate. And he comes to suffocate his prey, and after that, he swallows it whole. So this spirit of the python within this little girl was, was a spirit that, that was worshiping of devils. The python, this spirit, is alive today. It is a spirit also of fortune-telling. Isaiah 2 and 26, he talks about beware of the warlocks and the witches. We always talk about the witches, but what about the guy? Hmm. The warlocks, 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 sorcerers. Is it me or is it strange that every time you drive by or you might see somebody coming out of a psychic shop? I've never been in one, I promise you. But it appears there's mostly ladies in the shop reading than there are men. Don't raise your hand, but can anybody testify to say that you have the experience there's more women in there? than men. Don't raise your hand. Don't do that. So, but it appears that they have seemingly some type of connection to the spirit world. In the Old Testament, when Samuel was Saul was kicked out of God's leadership and Saul was trying to get back into favor with God, he, he, called, he called Samuel says, bring me up someone to talk to me. And Samuel went and pulled up the witch of Endura. And she began to speak to Saul. Speak to Samuel about Saul. I'm speak to Saul about Samuel, I'm sorry. But the confusion is that the spirit is always lurking in witches and warlocks. Divination is a spirit of rebellion. <laughs> it's stargazing. It's horoscopes. It's enchanters. Mm. It's drugs. It's music. It's art. Various things. You can't listen to everybody's music because the music is sending a message to you. And y'all know I like Tupac. But every now and then I gotta turn him off, like you didn't go on crazy, now what you're talking about, you know, bring my gun, bring my, what? <laughs> music. Hmm. Hallucinating. 
careful when you're around people now. I saw something like I see too, but every time I see you, you'll see something. I thought I saw something. It looked like something was moving. Okay, what 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 have you been taking? What have you been eating? You know? Every time I see you, something moving, you know. You know. I was I was looking the other day in my eyes and I saw a little black, black spot moving in my eye. Everybody has them. And the older you get, you get more of them. It's nothing deep or demon, it's just 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 Uh, no, 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 get off the gut. So, foreseeing, foretelling, divination, foreseeing, foretelling future events, discovering hidden knowledge, and the interpretation of omens and aids of super, with aid of supernatural power. The devil has power, but he does not have all power. The spirit of divination, all those things I just mentioned, but the prophet of God, true prophet of God, the true man and woman of God, receives not the spirit of divination, but they receive the spirit by revelation of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit speaks with them, through them, in them, and to you and I. So if you're not saved, you'll know who talking to you. Is it the devil or is it just is it the Lord? Let me tell you how you know when the devil is talking to you. You want to know? And the Lord tell you to give an offering, you said, that's the devil. <laughs> no, it's not. The devil ain't gonna never tell you to give any money to the church. Demonic spirits feed on information from fortune tellers and soothsayers. They feed on that. Deuteronomy 18, 12. Deuteronomy 18, 12. Say that, Deuteronomy. 18 and verse 12. Paraphrase, the Lord told Israel, he warns them to avoid the wicked customs. He says, when you come into the land that I'm going to bring you to, when you get there, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff going on. So when you come to Las Vegas, I'm sorry, when you come into the land that I'm bringing you to, it's going to be a whole lot of stuff going on, so you got to watch and avoid that stuff. Because you got to come out of this 2.0. There shall not be found, in verse 10 and 11 in Deuteronomy 18, there shall not be found among you any who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire. These people were crazy. They wanted so much to get that demonic spirit working, they burnt up their own children. Sacrificed them, said, don't do, that's what the custom of the, of the land was. They practiced witchcraft. They practiced also smooth sayers, or fortune telling, or who interpret omens, or dreams, and sorceries, a one who conjures spells, spells. <laughs> I was thinking about that song I used to sing, but I stopped singing. It must have been a spell on my mind. I don't want to sing that song no more. <laughs> Mediums and satanic presence who call up the dead. The call up the dead. Hmm. Don't hang around dead stuff too long. Because it's looking to find some place to land. Not just graveyard dead, but dead spiritually having no life. That you never experience God's activity in the person's life. But you suggest that's my best friend. And they don't pray. You never see them with a Bible. You never even call the name of Jesus. You never hear them coming to church or serving the Lord. Or, well, I don't need to go to church anymore. That's fine. It may be your, 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 your position to take. But, but when, what is your spiritual gauge when it comes to spiritual things? They never talk about spiritual things at all. But they want to bring you all this dead stuff. Wave at me and say, Pastor, I'm avoiding them graveyards this year. I'm avoiding them graveyards. Uh, I, 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 it took me enough to get back on my feet, so I don't seem to be hanging around with dead folk any longer. And facing this girl, the demon of the slave girl, the demons in the slave girls spoke a truth. You are the prophets of God. The mighty God, hand of God is on you guys. You're speaking the things that are of God. She told, spoke the truth, but did it in a mockery sense. Uh, they, they, they didn't need her reputation or her advertisement about ministry, about what Jesus was doing in the region, so she thought she would just help them out. But they really don't mean that. Hmm. 
It sounds like this on your job. Are you that Christian? I'm glad you hear it. No, you're not. Because every time I walk into your space, y'all get cold. Walk past my desk and see my Bible. It's like, what's that on your desk for? Well, why you got that other? What? I got my Bible. You got your book, you know. You go to school, your little friends, I'm so glad you're out of school, you're a Christian. No, you're not. Because my spirit does not settle you. When I walk in, demons begin to get real nervous. Because I'm about to lock some stuff down just with a few words in the name of Jesus come out. Mark's gospel, the first chapter, verse 24 and, and, and 25, we see here, uh, there was many in the synagogue, Jesus here is speaking, and Jesus walks to the synagogue, and within that synagogue or in that church setting, there were unclean spirits, and they were crying out, saying, let us alone, whatever to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth, do not, do you come to destroy, do not come to destroy us, I know that you are the Holy One of God, Mark's gospel, first chapter, verse 24, 25, so the devil knows who Jesus is. Demons know who Jesus is, but do you know who Jesus is? Is he the mighty one of God? Is it a great I am? Then he's able to deliver no matter the circumstance. In the text, Jesus rebuked him. I rebuked the spirits. I said, be quiet. Come out of him. And when the unclean spirit could see that he could not take him any further, he came out the man. They all were, everybody was amazed. What kind of doctrine is this? That Jesus has power over demons. I just come to submit to you again and let you understand that the same power of Jesus that had demons running out the church lives inside you and me. So don't sit there the whole service. You start feeling something just kind of off. Just, just go up and I rebuke that spirit in the name. I don't like that. I ain't agreeing with my spirit. Even if it's bothering you when you, you can't get into the service. Like I rebuke that distractive spirit. I got, I got to get focused on where I'm at right now. The text says in Acts 16 chapter, it says, after many days, Paul delayed for a while because he didn't probably want his mission and his purpose to be exposed. After many days, the demon that was in this little girl the demon is so uncertain of what type it was. Hmm. We have a clear example here, though, of the power of God. It was greater than the power of the devil. Because John 4 and 4, 1 John 4 and 4, is the greater one that's in us than he that is in the world. And when Paul told the demon, come out of her, it had to come out and leave her alone. The story this morning, I believe, shows us, shows me that children of God, sometimes the enemy is out to take over and bring evil power even in the church. The battle continues and will always be against God and Satan. But I'd rather be on the winning side. And that's on God's side than to be on Satan's side. But it's impossible for me to serve both sides. I want to, I'm asking myself so I don't get off. Should I go deeper or should I just get you to my point? Okay. All right, all right. Pull your shoes in and tighten your feet up. There's a church called Corinth. In 1 Corinthians 6 chapter, the writer begins to speak to them. The sixth chapter around verse 17 and verse 14. One of the many problems are the many problems that were going on in Corinth is the Christian problem today. Not having a clear awareness between the things of God and the things of Satan. Mm -hmm. In this chapter of 1 Corinthians, sixth chapter, he says, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Watch the lesson. 
I'm coming out of this 2.0, spirit of divination. We don't know how it got into the girl, but somehow it began to take control of her. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Let me read that text in the Message Bible just to embellish the thought of it. Just because something is technically legal doesn't mean it's spiritually appropriate. We have, illegal, we have legal That's all right, I'll be out in a few minutes. But it's spiritually appropriate. If I don't be careful, I'll get caught up with my own whims. And I've gone too far, and I can't get back. When God's people stray away, they think sometimes it's harmless. And before you know it, I'm caught up into a web, and havoc will come out of that. <sighs> Miscellaneous props, tea leaves, palm reading, horoscope, Ouija boards, crystals, dust, Cultist acts, computer games, charms, magic, <laughs> handwritings, drugs, hallucination. Careful, it doesn't drag you into a terrible place. History. The Corinthian church had legal, not, I'm sorry, had illegal acts of prostitution. And in the second Corinthians, they begin to say that, well, it's all, second Corinthians, I think the sixth chapter, I gave you the wrong text a few minutes ago. It says all things are lawful, but they're not expedient. Because I can eat what I want, I can drink what I want. So they took food and made it equal to their own sexual proclivities. And why should not I just eat what I want to eat, I do what I want to do. But before they knew it, one thing led to the next. They were caught up in something they couldn't break away from. It's more than just food. And even food can mess you up. And you don't eat everybody's cooking. How good it smells. That's why you have cup bears and armor bears. Let them go through it. <laughs> Pointing me against that pastor, you can't eat at everybody's table. You can't, you can't go out to eat with And you can't go out to eat with everybody. When they ask you what you want to drink, tell them bring it in a bottle with a top on it. And if you got the top open, I ain't drinking. I, I just lost my thirst. But I'm not just drinking and eating with everybody. Because it leads to the next. I'll tell you this, my little testimony I built up. You, many of you already heard it. I'm 16 years young. I go out to the party. I'm trying to be cool. And my friend told me, here's some ooey. I'm thinking of Willie House first, then God, and then can I get through this? And back when I, my crazy day we grew up, they would take the little, little thing and dip it into sherm and let it dry off. And before I knew it, I'm just going to just do a, do a Bill Clinton, I'm not going to hell. Y'all ain't going to work with me today. Y'all was too saved. I can't even preach free. You know? So I'm messing around with it and I'm just... And it, I didn't, I promise you, I didn't you know, try to blow it out my nose so I can see who get the circles up. I was trying to get past it to be cool. And Kennedy, I promise you, when I got home, I was looking for the door like this. And guess who opened the door? It wasn't Jesus. Woolly House. What's wrong with you? I'm good. How many know you can see your parents and that high will just go? Oh. 
all that liquor just go around like, I, I feel good. I'm right, I'm ready. No, there's something wrong with you. Then they come and say, let me smell your fingers, let me see your eyes. I'm good, I'm good, mama, I'm good. No, you're not. And I couldn't shake it. I couldn't shake it, and I was thinking, I said, God, if I don't get out of this, don't tell me what I'm going to start doing. And, and, and the short part of my testimony is that some of you better be glad God saved you when he did. Because yeah. you would see where you were headed. Please, prison, please. You have a life <laughs> on something that you never want to get rid of. Okay. So God, he delivered me. <laughs> <laughs> he delivered me, and what God didn't deliver me from, Willie House did the rest. He's like, oh, we, it's coming out of you. It's, it's thing coming out of your three point oh. It's coming out. <laughs> Spirit of divination, foretelling, control, mind altering, horoscopes. That just sounds bad. Horror. Horrible. Watch this. The latest polls finds that a little more than one quarter of Americans, 27%, including 37% of adults under 30, say that they believe in astrology. They believe in stargazing. They believe their lives, 51% believe their lives are orchestrated by horoscope. Astrology. They believe in astrology more than they believe in the Bible. They think they can get up, open the newspaper, and the astrologer says, horoscope says that today you're going to be very successful. You're going to find people that really like you. You're going to have blessed, or not blessed, but you're going to have a life that's going to be prosperous. You're going to be doing something great today. But the horoscope didn't tell you who woke you up. how you got out the bed. That part. More than a quarter of Americans embrace this. And even more so in this um, Gen Z generation. They want to know now. I want the answer. I don't want to have the weight to live through nothing. I want it Instagram. Right away. I want it TikTok. Tell me what to do and I'll go on home out my way. But Big Mama says some things you got to live through. You go through it and you'll know for yourself who God is. Houston, we got a problem. Spirit of divination is running rampant. People are led, being led by satanic control. A satan satanic intelligence not allowing their lives to be led by the Holy Spirit. Many are in trouble counseling with things they have no idea what they're getting into. Oh, it's just a horoscope. It's a door that will lead you to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. If you're going to get trapped or connected to anything, you're going to allow anything to come sticky in your life. Pick this Bible up and read the word of God and let it guide your life. I don't care what they say. Nothing else will do it like the word of God. So, can I get an amen? amen? All right, all right. Thank I want to make sure the message wasn't too bad this morning. So good. I know you responded to that, so thank you. So many get in trouble because they find themselves just doing a little bit. A little bit goes a long ways. Take a little bit of God's word and let it be the anchor of your life. Isaiah 47, he gives a warning again. He says, avoid these things. Isaiah 47, verse 13 and 14, avoid these things. Astrologers, stargazing, uh, um, uh, monthly, uh, monthly prognosticating or people that are speaking prophetically something. Avoid that stuff. They're speaking what they think is about your life. Don't get caught up 
chasing prophets. You walk in there, the prophet says, your name is Clinton. Yes, that's my mama's name. That's my government name. My mama named me Clinton. He told me my name. Well, you should have known your name before you went to church. So the prophet won't think that he's now, and it could definitely be straight on to tell you the name, but come on, you, you know your name. And, and Clinton House, yes, that's my name. That's my government name. My mama gave it to me. My daddy gave it to me. So well, I'm a prophet, wonderful, but I can't get mystified because you know my name. I got my driver's license, my name on my driver's license. I know my name. Unless I be caught myself, catch myself, catch myself chasing, trying to get another word. Stand solid on what God has given you. Live free from those things that are encapsulating, encapsulating or capturing you. Remember who you are in God. Allow him to be the center of your life. Paul looks at the girl and says, your day is about to change. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. You're going to come out of this with victory you've never experienced. The devil will not control you anymore. It might get me in trouble because that's what the gospel does. But I'm breaking that thing off your life right now. Spirit of divination, I command you to leave this house. Leave this girl alone. Do not trouble God's people any further. You have no place here. I don't need your propaganda, nor do I need your advertisement, but I need you to leave. Whenever the spirit that is wrong leaves, the right spirit comes in. And joy begins to happen in the life again. Can you imagine how this girl felt realizing that I was going halfway to church, but I never went to church. I was watching them go to church, but I wasn't going to church. But now I get a chance to experience God for myself. What was holding me back all these years now has been broken off my life. Come on, can you imagine? She came to the first service down by the river. They were praying in worship. And they said, well, what's you so loud about? I used to didn't have a mind. But now I have a new mind. A mind that's like Christ. That thing that was entangled in my life that I couldn't find anything to break it off my life. It's gone. Matter of fact, it's so gone. I'm so happy. I can rejoice all day long. You couldn't break it off of me, but Jesus did. Your neighbor will never really show you what had them bound. But they can sit today in the house of God and say, it don't have me any longer. So the next time the devil brings something new, he says, you should have got me when you had me. Because right now, I'm not going to let you take hold of me ever again. And if you push me too hard, devil, I'll start praising God on credit for what he's getting ready to do. My neighbor didn't save me. Mama didn't save me. Daddy didn't save me. But Jesus broke that. Don't you sit there and act like you had nothing broke off your life. Jesus broke you off. He took that thing about your life and told to let you go. Let you go. Let you go. Let you go. And he whom the sun set free is free indeed. That's why the devil don't like you because you come to church. You don't come bound and locked up and wait for something to happen. You walk in as a testimony, as a miracle that God has changed your life forever. I need miracle people to give God some praise in this house. You have been set free. Look around and shake your hands at three people and say, it's off me, it's off me. Yeah, you can't shake, don't shake, but you can shake, say, it's off me. Whatever had me had to let me go. Whatever was binding me had to let me go. Look at somebody and say, it's off me, it's off me, it's off me. It's off. I'm free to give God praise. I'm free to worship God. That thing that would never, ever let me go, Jesus said by Paul, let her go. Let her go. Let her go. I just need three witnesses to look at somebody and say, you have no idea. Oh, God. I'll look at somebody that might get real, tell them again, you have no idea. That thing had me. Oh, God. My God, swing around and tell three people, you have no idea, you have no idea. I'm not here by my own doing, by the grace of God. Come on, send up a praise in this house. We got to go. Come on.
on each church by the grace of God. Hey, hey, hey. Woo! My God, my God. Hold your hands up. I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free from the control of the enemy. I promise you, if nobody else, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise will forever be in my mouth. My soul will boast in the Lord that the humble will hear and be made glad. Give God a praise and say, thank you.